Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. I'm going to be on the online prosperity show talking about my career as a certified book guy, uh, writing books, helping other people write books and giving people who, who are, who are thinkers and writers and, 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 and articulate people, a home base to hang out at a meeting of the minds kind of thing. It's a really good conversation with Prosper. He's a good dude. Tune in. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've actually brought you the book guy. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm really good. Thank you. Prosper. Do I call you Prosper? <laughs> it is Prosper, my man. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, Andrew has an interesting place that he's created. Um, it's called the Creative Writing Mecca Space that is in Moral Book up in Victoria. All right. This is for people all ages and all stages and um, it's an after school writing club for kids especially from 8 to 16 who actually dream of becoming an author and for the big kids 16 plus and what you guys do is have weekly author meetups and there's a whole schedule of events upcoming including guest workshops and uh, talks or interviews that are designed to help people write a book or um, become a young author. You not only do that, you um, host a podcast daily that is um, has been going on for a number of days. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on. And also, um, you've got the launchpad for Writers Club, a YouTube channel, right? That's right. The YouTube channel for the Writers Club. Yep. Absolutely. Well, there seems to be a lot of content creation going on there and stuff that is designed to help, um, you know, people, you know, fast track their um, way to becoming an author or just hang around people that are like minded. Now, Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Now, tell us a little bit about, you know, what exactly happens at the Mecca space there and um, what sort of people, um, you know, find it useful. Uh, so it's, it's basically, um, a creative space. It's, it's a room with cha tables, chairs, and books. So when you look at it on paper, there's not much to it, but what it is, is a space where authors meet up and people who want to be authors. So when I published my first book, I was 24. I was the first author I'd ever met at that point. They're not, it's for a kid who wants to write books. It's hard to meet a mentor author. Uh, so I've been doing this incursion thing for primary schools for a few years and I've worked with over a thousand kids in a creative writing um, project uh, over three years at primary schools and at every school I meet one kid who says I want to be an author when I grow up. It's like that's so cool. They're a rare kid and they're so rare that they've usually never met another kid like them. Uh, and they kind of shy away from the topic of wanting to write because, you know, they come up with stories constantly. They're storytellers. But when they tell their friends, I guess they can see their eyes gloss over and they're kind of humoring them at best. Like, oh, cool story. Yeah, yeah. Let's kick the football or, or whatever. So these kids, you know, they're, they're shy kids, but they're, they're not quiet kids. And they've usually never met another kid like them. So I thought, what if there was a space which is their space. It's their after school hangout space for those kids. So first of all, the coolest thing that happens here is they hang out with each other and they just come alive. Like they're just talking about their novels. They're, they're planning out characters and, and world building and all these things. And then what I try to do is, uh, I guess mentor them in, you know, I'm an author. What, what can I teach you? And not only am I, am I an author, I run a publishing label. So I know lots of other really good authors. So let's pull them in and you can meet them as well. So I'm hoping if a kid is a member of Launchpad for a few years, you know, I was the first author I had ever met, but I'm hoping that these kids, by the time, you know, they're adults, they'll have met 30 authors and worked with them and, and interviewed them and interacted with them. Right. That's, that's, that's the reason for the space. That's, that's what we do here. Absolutely. So you, I can see you're deep in thought. You're processing that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I you. hope that what you're thinking is like, 
I wish that existed when I was a kid because the, the philosophy was like, I'm going to build the club that I wish existed when I was a kid. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Absolutely. Well, yesterday we did actually um, witness yet another gentleman who uh, did something he wished existed while he was growing up. You know, the uh, famous Elon Musk shooting rockets and uh, Tesla into the, you know, orbit, something that he would have wanted to do while he was a kid. So thank you so much for, you know, looking out for those other kids. Like you say, they don't have people around them that might be of help or that can be mentors for them so that they can actually, um, you know, see how they, they, um, they can, um, you know, progress. Now you've written a book. What has, how has that changed um, your life as a person or as somebody who people are now looking up to considering that you have author as part of your title or description? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, how does it change my life? I think um, the biggest change was deciding to write books. See, when I was in high school, um, I've, I've always written, but I never wanted to be a writer. And my, I remember my high school English teacher, she also doubled as our career guidance counsellor. And she called a meeting with me and my mum saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I, I said, I wanted to play in bands because I played music as well. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be a rock star. Obviously, that's the coolest job in the world. That's what I'm going to do. And she said, oh, so you're not going to write books? And I said, nah, wh why would I do that? Like, there's no cool authors in the world. I'm, that's not a cool job. Um, and <laughs> so she actually teared. She started to cry, um, which at the time, being a, being a teenager, being a cruel person, I just thought was kind of funny. <laughs> but it, it was years later. I think I was 22 when I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this writing a novel thing a try. And as soon as I put my mind to it and, you know, put pen to paper, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is what I do now. Like this is for the rest of my life, I will write books. Like it's just what I was meant to do. And so I still think about that teacher, you know, even though at the time it didn't click, you know, I just thought it was funny that she cried. But years later, it was so meaningful to have that kind of encouragement from a teacher to just say like, I believe in you that you can write books. Absolutely. Well, you talking about a teacher or somebody who nudged you into achieving your dreams. That is sort of how my story also, um, you know, unraveled because I did happen to meet a teacher when I was 13 back home in Zimbabwe and she was an yep. Australian exchange student who came to teach at our school. So now she became a role model and she also opened up the idea or the thought that you can actually go and work anywhere else in the world and you can do what you absolutely love. Okay. So she taught us for a couple of terms and she planted the seed in my head to say that, you know, you can go to Australia or you can go anywhere else in the world. Now I did not have role models by then. So what it is that you are doing there is vital because you're going to have kids that will look you up later on or you would mentor them and grow, grow their zeal, you know, and their passion up until they are actually doing cool things in the world. Now, oh, last so. year I actually appeared on national TV channel nine with yeah. my teacher thanking her for really? having shown me the path. And it was on a TV show called this time next year. So my man, hold on to what you're doing. You never cool. know what seed you are planting inside of people and you never know how far that will go. All right. I've actually put in a few efforts to contact that teacher, but I can't, I can't track her down. Her name was Miss Rose at the time, but I think it might've changed by now. Um, but I've never been able to thank her for, for that huge vote of confidence, which probably made me who I am now. Although so, I never showed it. I never showed that at the time, regretfully. You, you probably want to do that. The reason why you want to do that is it then validates her life work. If yeah. she can then remember and remember you and realize that her work where she did that before um, made a difference in somebody else's life, that's the best gift you could ever give anyone. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll try, cool, yeah. I'll try to take times to track her down. I'll, I'll try one more time. 
<laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, what happens then when the kids, um, you know, come from school, um, they're hanging around there with mentors and, you know, other people of, you know, of the same sort of mindset, what sort of activities are they doing to get them closer to, you know, achieving their status as authors or actually penciling down a book and putting it together? There's a number of things. Um, we've got activities like little um, writing, um, you know, worksheets that teach them different skills. Uh, we, we get involved in interviewing all the authors that come in. So when I interview an author, it's not just me sitting opposite the, the, the author that's visited. There's a third microphone here and one of the kids will get up and have a conversation as well. So it's not, I don't want them to be sitting in the audience observing two authors speak. I want them to feel like they are the third author. They're part of the conversation. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of like little writing advice and we write stories and we plan novels and we do all kinds of things. But what I think maybe even more importantly, it's a hangout space. So it's a place where they can come and feel relaxed. And sometimes they just want to, you know, watch Netflix or, or, you know, hang out on their iPad or, or read a book and not really do anything productive. They just want to relax after school, but they're relaxing in an environment where, you know, I'm recording a podcast about war and peace. This guy's working on his novel and this guy's just chilling on the couch. But it's like, it's like being in the Gryffindor common room. One kid said, it's like, you can chill out, but it's their space. I liken it to this. Like imagine there's an author doing a talk and there's a, an audience with a thousand kids. And it's like well, one or two or a hundred of those kids might end up being great authors. Right. right. That's one approach. But imagine if there's an author who works from home and their own kid sometimes just hangs out in, in their dad's writing space, just lies back on the couch and, and reads a book while, while their dad's over there working on the next novel. It's like, how likely do you think that kid is to be an author when they grow up? Absolutely. It's like, it's rubbing 90%, off. Yeah. like that kid's going to be an author that his, his target human, his target grown up is an author. So that's what this space is. It's like, you don't actually have to sit there and write. You can just hang out, but you're hanging out with people who are inspirational, hopefully. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, you, yeah. also don't, you also don't just uh, provide these, um, you know, kids and adults with bin bags. You also have a, um, a, 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 a publishing label, Up Up Media. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so that was born out of, uh, let's see. So they kind of, these two businesses grew simultaneously and then merged. So I was touring from about 2012 to 14, promoting my first two books. And I would meet other authors like myself, like Karen. Uh, there's hundreds of Australian authors who, who, who have written a book and then they're hitting the road, going to conventions to promote it going to like, you know, Supernova or Oz Comic Con or, or whatever and selling books. And they're kind of like, I saw them as like garage bands, you know? And I thought I came from a garage band, an actual band, you know, the indie rock scene. And the indie rock scene was a scene, but the indie writer scene was, wasn't a scene. Everyone was individual, but no one kind of collected together. Collectively, yes. So I thought, I kind of thought, what's going on here? Like, we're all doing the same thing. We're not competitors. We should be grouping together. So I made this label to try to be, um, the subheading for the label is the, the indie punk label of publishing for the garage bands of writing. So it, it's that stepping stone. And you know what happens with publishers these days? If you um, approach a publisher and say, I want to, I want to publish my new book. The first thing they'll ask you is like, how many Twitter followers do you have? They won't ask you your name. They won't ask you what the book's about, anything like that. It's like, how big a following do you already have that we can use to promote the book? And so the advice they give you is go out and be an indie author, a garage band, build a following, and then come back to us when you've got a following. When you've got a market. Right. So they give you that advice. But then when you say, okay, how do I be an indie author? They're like, uh, 
something about social media. Like they don't know the next, they don't know how to answer that question. They don't know how to be an indie author. So up and up media is meant to be that stepping stone. You know, it, it's, it's where people starting off on their journey to, to become a well-known author. I hope they start. And so the goal, if you, if you, if I was to publish a book by you, Prosper, my goal isn't to like then publish your next 10 books. It's like, I want your next book to be published by a penguin, but I want to help you get that following big enough to then go to penguin because wow. they're going to ask you to go and build a following. Great stuff. Um, so all I, do is, I hope in 10 years there's authors and when they, when they get interviewed and they say, Oh, tell us about the early days of your career. I hope they'll say up and up media was, was my stomping ground. You know, my that's stomping. where I, that's where right. I carved out my career. Great. So exactly what you're talking about is the big publishers is like going to look for a job and then they're like, have you got experience when you're just coming out of high school? So up yep. and up media is the experience ground where you actually hang out with people that, um, you know, you know, are viscerally caring about what you're doing and they're not going to be judgmental about how many people you know, and you know, um, you know what your Twitter following is, so to speak. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, quite a few of the people that come here are working on their first book. So they're unannounced, you know, they're, they're unknown authors. Um, so they're not all indie authors. Indie authors have started to make a following. They might be promoting their first novel or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's also people that, that haven't even got to that stage yet. So it's, it's a, for them, it's just like, okay, let's plan out your first book. Let's figure out how to, how to approach this thing. Absolutely. Great stuff. So not only uh, people hanging out at bean bags and also, you know, <laughs> we only have one bean bag. I'd like to qualify. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, becoming members of a garage band with the up, up media, um, you know, uh, publications, you also offer tutoring services that uh, people can, in, um, you know, indulge uh, either in person when they come to the uh, launch pad or yeah. when they can join you on Zoom or on Skype. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, um, usually the way that goes is the kids who want tutoring end up just becoming members of the club because as a member of the club, they can come here after school every day and, and get sort of as much tutoring as they want. And for price effectiveness, that's, that's sort of better. Um, but I do offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring that's it's usually more for sort of fringe cases for example um you know kids with special needs or long distance things or that kind of thing but it's essentially the same thing we'll work through different worksheets that we've created um we're, yeah we're, we're, we'll look at your novel i'll ask you oh, what are you up to now what are you stuck on what do we need to figure out for you for you for the next chapter of the book you're working on and we and we work it out yeah Great stuff. I can see the passion in your eyes and I can hear it in your voice. What sort of testimonials or what sort of uh, response are you getting from people that have gone through this memberships and um, what, what, what are they saying about your work or the place in and of itself? I think the place, the kindest compliment I've had was the kid who said, this is like the Gryffindor common room. I was like, Yes, 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 it is. That's, That's what I was going for. Um, but for the, the most, um, I guess, good feedback I get is from the school program I do. So I go to schools um, and I, I work with a bunch of kids. Uh, I think the biggest bunch I've done is 120. The smallest was 12. Uh, and what we do is we make an anthology book where every kid writes their own story. Um, that's actually, I don't know if you can see that in the shot. See that stack of books with the colorful spines. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so that's, that's 20 books that we've made in that fashion with 1050 authors. And each one of those authors is still in primary school and hopefully had a, had a life changing experience being part of this, this book. And they've got copies of their books at home on their bookshelves. And I encourage them to put them next to um, their favorite author so they can sit back and like, look at Roald Dahl and then themselves. Wow. Uh, anyway, I forgot the question. What was it? Oh yeah, the um the good feedback. So I, I get most of my good feedback from, from, from that program. I've heard more times than I can count that it should be part of the curriculum. That's quite a good compliment. Um but I think recently I'll tell you can I tell you a story about one father that, that called me? Do that. Um 
he, he um, this is just one case out of the, the 1,050. So his boy has learning difficulties. He's got cerebral palsy. And um, so the, the Launchpad program takes about six months. So I go there, we work on the stories. Uh, they submit the stories, they get turned into a book. And then by the time we do the book launch party, which is when the parents come along and see the finished product, these kids have been working on this for, for you know, six months or more. Uh, in this case, when the dad came along to the launch party, he didn't know anything about the project. So the school hadn't communicated it to him or, you know, maybe the, the, the brochure got lost or something like that. Um, but he told me he, he tutors his boy at home because he's a little bit behind because of his learning difficulties. And he tutors him in reading and writing. And he said during the year, he noticed this surge in enthusiasm from his, from his boy. And he just started taking leaps and bounds and getting better. And he kind of took credit for it because he didn't know where else this could be coming from. And he said to me at the launch party, it clicked. It's like, Oh, that's, that's where the surge came from. That's why my boy is suddenly so into reading and writing. And I thought that's, that's nice. Um, that was a really good compliment. And then what happened is the boy raised his hand when, when the, the principal of the school said, who'd like to read a story in front of the whole school. Uh, and he raised his hand and he got up in front of the school and he read his story. And the dad was like wiping tears away from his eyes. And I could see him texting his wife saying, you'll never believe what I'm watching right now. Uh, and he was just like beside himself, thanking me at the end. Anyway, he, he called me a couple of weeks ago and he told me that, um, he told me that his boy had been being bullied pretty severely, um, which is awful. Three boys were bullying this boy and it had been going on for over a year and they'd actually had to fire the principal of the school because of they that. had to fire the, the, the boy's teacher because the teacher and the principal were unable to solve this bullying problem. And he, the dad said when his boy raised his hand at the book launch party to read his story, he thought, son, put your hand down. Like, don't give him something else to bully you about. That was his initial reaction. But his boy put his hand up. He got up, he read the story and the bullies, I don't know which three boys they were because everyone there quietly listened, politely listened and clapped at the end and encouraged him. And the dad said, you know what? They don't bully him anymore. And so as a side effect of the program, which has nothing to do with bullying, I inadvertently solved a bullying problem, wow. which was plaguing the school. And so when he told me that, I haven't really relayed this story to anyone until now. It's kind of hitting me now that I'm saying it out loud. But when he said that, I was just like, it's so validating. It's like, yeah, I'm doing a thousand more. Like no matter what, I'm keeping doing this. No, absolutely. Because everybody has a different story. And, and I think I would have alluded to this example earlier on that each and every one of these fingers is of a different height for a reason, right? Because everybody stands for something in the world. Everybody is there to fulfill a different purpose. So each and every one of us, if one of these fingers misses out from your hand, your hand becomes not as useful as it is when all the fingers are there. All right. So you, your part in, in all of this is really making people find themselves within themselves because a story within themselves, a book is like a rebirth of who that person is. So you are literally giving people back to themselves in a way that is permanent. That's really nice. That's a, a really nice way to put it. Helping so, um connect with themselves yeah absolutely absolutely keep doing what you're doing man so how can people get a hold of you so that they can actually get this whole um birth rebirth out of them or born again <laughs> <laughs> um okay there's it depends what you're after so if you want to look up look me up it's probably the best way because if you look up andalewis.com um yeah. a-n-d-e-r-l-o-u-i-s.com um, that's me. That's my website. And if you go about, it lists all these different things we've talked about and you can jump over to Launchpad. You can jump over to Up and Up Media. Uh, if you're interested in Launchpad, if you want to come and do a bit of a meeting of the minds thing here and, and meet authors and hang out, that's launchpad.vic.edu.au. 
Vic for Victoria, EDU for education. Um, and Up and Up Media is at upandupmedia.com.au. Absolutely. I want to put a book out there. Absolutely. The well, at the end of the day, my man, you've been fantastic. And this is probably going to be one of the best episodes we've actually oh. ever had. Um, Thank you. And it's, yeah, very informative, relaxed, and you, you brought the house down. Now, obviously, <laughs> there... We can keep going if you want. I'm good. <laughs> That's good. All right. We, we also want, um, you know, um, looking after the audience there. A lot of people would have stuff to be doing. Now, if you're, um, you know, going to be looking at where we are in the year right now, it's the beginning of the year. Some people would have had a resolution to say, you know what, this year is going to be the year that I'm going to do something um, for myself. Um, maybe I'm going to, you know, put, tell my story or put a book out there. But then obviously as resolutions wear out, you know, February, March, um, you know, people forget what they intended to do. What sort of piece of advice can you give to somebody, um, you know, who, who has an idea to put a book out there, but, um, you know, might just be procrastinating. Well, my resolution this year, strangely enough, is health first. I think last year I worked so hard, I, I, I sacrificed my health. So if you're going to write a book that takes a, a lot of discipline, it takes work. It's not, um, it's not like writing a song, like writing a song is all inspiration. It's all you can, you can finish writing a song in the time that the inspiration lasts, but writing a book is hard. And so you'll be inspired for the first 5% and then the rest, the 95%, you've got to rely on discipline because that, that, that inspiration is worn off. So um, you're going to have some hard work. It, it almost becomes like data entry. And that's when everyone gives up is when it becomes work. Um, but then what you end up with is, is five half written books. So you've, you've got to stick to it if you want to have a finished book. But I would say, look after your health. It's, it helps. You, you're more productive if you look after your health first. And I've been doing that this year and I've been noticing changes. You know, I've got a million things to do today, but I'm hitting the gym first, no matter what. And then uh, you still get the million things done, but you feel better at the end of the day. So. I don't know that is that good advice it, it doesn't really promote my business at all but um, you, you don't it. have to because at the end of the day if people are not feeling well they can't do well and there's no way that they're going to come through and promote your business so um it's 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 all relative in in whichever way you've spoken about it and um, i can't thank you enough my man i don't know if you've heard of uh, les brown he talks more about their um, the richest place in the in, in the world do you know where that is i do not Yes, it is the graveyard, okay? Therein lies books that were never written, movies that were never uh, acted on. So if you are watching this right now and you're thinking to yourself, oh, maybe I do have a story or two to tell, reach out to Andrew and he and, um, you know, the guys at Up and Up Media would definitely be able to help you birth that book um, through so that you too can actually maybe have a business that's profitable and enjoyable or just have a life that's of a happier existence. In the meantime, thank you so much, Andrew, for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, may I, before we sign off, sorry, I wanted to ask you one question and, and if this is okay. Yes. And I, I always ask this. I can't look at a bookshelf without asking a question. And you've got a hundred books behind you. If you had to recommend one of those books behind you to me, what would it be? I would recommend a book by Shirley McLean and it's called Coach Yourself to Wealth. All right. Coach Yourself to Wealth. All right. Thank Coach you. Yourself to Wealth. If you can indulge me, I will show you. Shirley McKinnon, Coach Yourself to Wealth. All right. It's not, it's not about money. It's not about, um, it's not about money. It's, it's, it's basically about your mindset and everything else that might be limiting you from reaching your, your, your highest, um, uh, potential, potential. Beautiful. All right. It's, it's one book that takes you on a journey inside of yourself. Not very many books do that. Sounds great. Absolutely. And, uh, if, if you were doing McKinnon such a good get, sign off there. And if Shelly <laughs> McKinnon gets to watch this video, Put me on your show. show. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much, my man. And thanks so much for that last, last bit. Thank you. Good to meet you, man. Good stuff. Thank <laughs> you.